Hello and welcome to today's show and it's going to be a good one. This is the companion video to the security light video I've already done where I promised you I'd tell you a little bit about the Lutron system that I used in that project. Now I'm not affiliated with Lutron, I don't sell Lutron, I'm not a limited liability residential contractor or general contractor, I'm no longer a residential or commercial electrician, I'm not advising you anything I'm just entertaining you and that's the purpose of this video, just simply to give you a little entertainment, maybe give you a little overview of the system. The Lutron system I show you is not by any means complete. There are some other devices I don't have. It's just kind of to give you an idea of what this system is all about and how easy it is to use because quite frankly if you have a smartphone and internet access and you can install a dimmer or replace a light switch you probably can handle this easily. But I don't advise you one way or the other. So what do you say we get right to it? If you have real property to sell in the greater Murfreesboro, Rutherford County area, then call Dell to sell at Benchmark Realty 615-409-SOLD. That's 7653 or 615-809-2323. I believe that this, these three white objects up here represent uh, what's in a starter pack. You will of course have to have a bridge, one bridge per, per household, and you may need a repeater if your house is big enough. It connects just straight up with a ethernet cable and with power, and it's not hard to do, just put it in your router. And there's really nothing to adjust on this. It does have a master reset button back here, which you may, you may have to push the first time to get it to do a software update and it's kind of cute what it does because it has like four LEDs in the corner and it chases around in bright as it's loading that new firmware edition so that's pretty well it's pretty well much plug and play now this is a wall mount device and as you can see I'll pull it up here so the camera will focus we have a off and on and a brighter and a dimmer and this thing is designed for wall lamps, like uh, table lamps. And I have two of these. I use one of them in the master bedroom, and I have one bedside table lamp in here, and I have the other one through a, a short extension cord. And, and it's not a 1,200-watt heater, so there's not a lot of current. It's just one LED lamp light bulb on there. And you might wonder why these are dark and light. And the only thing I can figure is, because in my house, it's done this way it's actually upside down because like so many people were taught it's white on right so the neutral side is this side and that will make it when you plug it into a receptacle may make it be upside down it has a little LED here that that's what you use when you monitor like if you have to when the first time you want to uh, sync them into the app or to the system you do have to like push the down button and hold it for a certain number of seconds and then it blinks fast and it shows up in the app for you to program in. This thing over here is actually two pieces. This is a Pico remote they call it and it's a little miniature job and this is the pedestal and the pedestal has a little heft to it, a little weight. It's got kind of a non-skid back to it so it doesn't want to slide off your table and when the Pico remote comes in Mine had a little guy in the back, a little clear piece of plastic with some sticky tape so that you could stick him to a piece of furniture and then, of course, lift him off as you might need to change batteries, but that would be handy. And in this configuration, like in the master bedroom, one remote runs both lamps. And if you think about it, do you really need a, a remote for the lamp? And you say, well, yeah, you kind of do because this guy is going to be buried probably under the headboard or underneath the bedside table, that sort of thing. Now this device is one of the dimmers. This is one of the outside light circuits. If you've watched the uh, companion video to this, this runs the outside lights. And I did choose a dimmer. You can see the little lights that come up this little bar graph and if I turn it on you'll see the lights chase all the way up to the top that just means it's on full bright if I go up or down with the brightness it'll stop somewhere in the middle and off is down here at the bottom so if we just push this on there do you see the little green light come up and you can bring it down bring the outside lights 
down in intensity down like this and this is a way in case you can't look out a window and see your lights it's it's a way or if you're in the room and you can't see the light that you just dim down it's just an indicator if you're remote where it's at this goes in just like a switch with two wires i believe that the electronics is set up such that it needs at least one light something in the circuit to complete the circuit because this has electronics in it and with the electronics they have to have some power of some sort and i think the way they do that is passing a small very small couple of milliamp uh, worth of power through the light not enough to make it turn on but just enough to power that circuit because this broadcast has to be able to broadcast and listen back and forth and it has to be alive to do that and so it's able to do that simply I think by by passing a current through a light something small like that this device is a switch that I use to turn the overhead over the garage light on it's just an on off switch off on simple it has a little light that tells you there when it's on and when it's off if I push it on you should see it go green it goes green I push it, it goes off it's just on off but it's a little more complicated in that it can wire up as a three-way switch and three-way switches instead of like one light leg they have two traveler legs and it really flips from from the up position one of the legs is on you flip it down position the other leg is on this just has an up and a down and on and off and if you don't use the other leg like if you're just using as a single pole switch you'll take a wire nut and you'll put your wire nut on there and it will close off the one switch you only use one leg so you'll have once one of those traveler legs being used as a light leg the hot or the power coming into the switch of course it has to be grounded and in order to fire the electronics inside here because it has to have power running through a circuit at all time in order to run the Wi-Fi and all that it has to have a neutral Now, to the best of my observation, there's at least one more in-wall dimmer device that's available. There may be more, but I think there's at least one more. And it will look a lot like this one here. It'll still have the bar graph up and down to the lights, the up and down for the dimmer, and I'll have the on and off. But the difference is, it's going to look on the face like this Pico remote in that it will have a little round button in the middle. And that's your favorite button. That's a preset, and what you do is you find a particular range in the dimming that you like, and then what you do is you push that button and hold it for there for a certain number of seconds, and then it remembers that level of dimming. And for that privilege, unless my memory fails me, it doubles the cost of the in-wall device from about 60 bucks to 120 or so. One last device I have installed I want to talk about is a Wi-Fi thermostat connected through the Lutron app. It actually connects through the Honeywell app, but the Honeywell app talks to the Lutron app. And you can do your, you can sit in your chair and still using your phone, run it up and down in kind of that one convenient location. I do want to point out this is a Honeywell. If we look in the paperwork, I think still today, the Lutron paperwork will show it works with Nest. It won't work with Nest because when Google bought them, they broke the works with Nest program sharing data thing and made it where it wouldn't work with them anymore. And it does apparently work with Google and the Google Assistant and all the other lovely stuff, but Google Nest no longer plays with Lutron. So this is a Honeywell uh, program here, and what it does is it works through the Honeywell default program that they have on their website but those two programs will talk back and forth so they work and play well with others now you'll notice i have it at a steamy 
60 degrees and that's because I left it on hold I guess overnight I turned it off but it will do uh, let me turn it on the fan if I can get it to work there we go fan mode it has three this is a very simple one at on which just means 24 7 365 automatic this means come off and on with your air conditioner and circulate I like that because if you happen to have a house that didn't have a manual J provided when they when they did the calculation on balancing your house sometimes you'll have a hot spot one room will be burning up or cooling down way too much and the other end of the house maybe it's too hot or too cold and they're opposite what circulate does is it just periodically about 30 percent 30 35 percent of the time we just run the fan just to stir the air in your house to kind of keep it equalized out and i think that's pretty good it has a mode this one's very simple if i can get it to work come on Get my finger, I'm at an angle so my vision is off a little bit. It has heat and cool and of course off. There are fancier ones Honeywell makes that you can put on a set and it will switch over, kind of do the, the spring and summer switch over type deal. Uh, home, go back to home if I can get it to work. Get my little finger. Okay, uh, you can change the background with the setting, three different colors and that kind of good stuff. But it shows you outdoor temperature, shows you an outdoor humidity, and the weather it's, says it's fair, I guess, out there with the, the sunshine. That comes through the Wi-Fi, and so it sets that. It does have the temperature and the humidity. It does have a humidistat built into the unit. And this guy is significantly cheaper than the Nest. A Nest thermostat will run about 230 to 250 and they don't work with the Lutron app anymore. They may fix that in the future, but they have it right now. The other brands, I think there's Ecobee or some of the other things. Anyway, even Honeywell has a co-branded unit with Lutron, and that runs you about like the Nest does. This guy I happened to catch on sale at a big box store for $117. So whether I need it or not, I went ahead and bought one. I like it. It works pretty good. I can sit in my chair and play with Thursday and never heard get up. So it's pretty cool. It's not a necessity, but it's pretty pretty good. And this actually connects through the Wi-Fi again through the Honeywell app. It's just that the Honeywell app and the Lutron apps talk together, and so that you can actually run it and program it, do your stuff, whatever you want to do. I'd like to lightly cover the Lutron app. This is a screenshot of my home screen on the telephone. On it, you'll notice the little light blue shade and lamp of the Lutron app, the icon. Tapping it brings up the Lutron home screen, and you'll see I've named my system the Get Behind Me Satan. It says I have five lights on, and it's currently 57 degrees. 57 toasty degrees. Here, you'll also notice it has several devices listed. There are actually four different categories. Living room, master bedroom, exterior, and highlight. These are names I gave them. Clicking the gear in the upper left-hand corner brings up the settings. If you'll notice, there's another gear by Advanced. We'll tap on it. The most important thing here, I notice, is time and location. This is what you need to set so that your schedules will plot out according to your time zone. There are also provisions for a range extender. It's like this is, after all, on the Wi-Fi network, although it is on its own bridged network. Returning to settings, you'll see at the very top, it says add a device. There are eight Lutron devices added at this point in time. Tapping by it will bring up add a device, and you'll see a list of devices which the Lutron app currently supports, with a notable exception that works with Nest, does not work with Nest. Google, when they acquired Nest, stopped that feature. The public position is that there is a security reason for this. However, Nest has its own smart home features and products. Lutron does have a maximum number of connected Lutron devices. Returning to this screenshot of the home screen with the rooms in it, the devices that are defined in their system, we see the same living room, master bedroom, exterior, and highlight. These are defined when you add the devices in your system. These groups can be expanded to show what's in them. The living room has two devices, a tabletop lamp and a remote. The exterior has those two circuits we talked about, the exterior front and exterior rear security lights. Also, there's the highlight. That's the one I put over the garage. Or rather, that's the device I put over the garage to operate that highlight. You may also set schedules, and this is where your time and location has an effect. 
Now here we see each event has to have its own schedule. We don't have just on and off, so you have to turn it on with one schedule, make another schedule to turn it off, and you may have a third, fourth, or fifth that adjust on dimmers what particular light intensity you want them to have. At the top you'll notice the first schedule, rear off, and that's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All day, seven days, and they come off at 30 minutes before sunrise. You can also set it 20 minutes, 10 minutes, at sunrise, or even before sunrise, after sunrise, whatever you decide you like. Please note at the bottom, we have a rear on. The lights come on 30 minutes after sunset, those same seven days a week. To bring up one of the thermostats, we'll click the temperature where it says currently 57 degrees. This brings up the thermostat labeled central. Very imaginative there, isn't it? So you'll see that the central unit is currently set at 57 degrees. You can do a plus or a minus to change that temperature, confirming it with the blue check mark up in the top corner. You can also set it in mode from either off to heat or cool. You can also work the fan from auto, which comes on and off as the thermostat would call it, on all the time or circulate. Circulate is a nice little feature, particularly if you have a little bit of an older home that may not have had a manual J and it's a little bit unbalanced. It allows you then just to circulate the air periodically without actually running the unit, which can help you balance out the house. You can also use a schedule. An additional feature, which is kind of nice, if we go back to the settings screen, we see arriving and leaving home. The app has the ability to locate you based upon your phone's location. Now, it does have to run in the background, and we'll take some of your battery to do that. So, if you have a device controlling the front porch light, you can set it to come on when you drive up. 